Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report podcast. I'm your host, Vago Maradian. Our podcast is brought to you by Bell. Since 1935, Bell has been redefining flight. Learn more about its pioneering spirit at bellflight.com. Had the coronavirus pandemic not intervened, we would have been in Tampa next week for the National Defense Industrial Association's annual SOFIC, the number one global gathering of special operators for their annual conference and trade show. This year, the show will be virtual, dubbed the SOFIC. And earlier this week, we spoke to retired United States Air Force General Hawk Carlisle, who is now the president and CEO of NDIA. Our VSOFIC coverage is sponsored by Bell, Elbit Systems of America, and Leonardo DRS. We spoke before Defense Secretary Mark Esper's comments at the Brookings Institution. Here's our conversation with General Carlisle. Hawk, thanks very much for joining us. Hey, thanks, Vago. I always enjoy having conversations with you. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, hope you, yours, uh, and your team at uh, NDIA are well uh, as you guys go uh, charging into new territory, which is a virtual SOFIC show. Everybody who knows uh, SOFIC knows that it's the world's leading special operations gathering. It happens every year uh, in Tampa in May. Uh, unfortunately, because of the COVID pandemic, you guys are, have had to reschedule that, or, or rather, keep it on track, but do it virtually as a V. Sophic. Talk to us about the decision to delay uh, the physical conference. How you guys are actually trailblazing to try to make as big and as productive event as possible for the folks who otherwise would have been there physically? Well, thanks, uh, Vago. Appreciate it. So clearly the decision to cancel Sophic was a difficult one because it is so important. It's so important to industry to get face-to-face and uh, personal time with uh, decision makers inside of the U.S. Special Operations Command and, uh, you know, partnerships between industry members, small and large. It's just really important. Um, but clearly the most important thing is the health and well-being of all our industry members, all of our special operations members, is to really make sure that we, uh, we, we take care of their health and safety. So given the challenge that we're in right now, it was kind of a you know, this, we, we have to do this. But again, going back to the importance of uh, bringing folks together to, uh, and this year's theme for SOF is expanding uh, the competitive space and, and to continue to get better and better at what we do, we really felt like we needed to do something uh, to still bring them together, but to do it in a virtual uh, manner. So we worked very closely with SOCOM, and I give huge credit to Jim Smith and, the, and uh, General Rich Clark, the commander of uh, Special Operations Command, and a ton of credit to my team. I, I got to tell you, they've been outstanding, and in particular, Christine Klein, who is our Senior Vice President for Meetings and Divisions, has really trailblazed this. So what, as we decided with SOCOM that we really wanted to do something, needed to do something, but we couldn't do it in person, we worked really hard to bring a great event together, and I think it will be. We'll learn a lot. We already have, actually, uh, with the right platform, the right things to do. But we're going to have uh, as close to um, in-person as we can. You're going to be able to have one-on-one chats with folks. You're going to be able to go to uh, industry showcases. You're going to be able to hear keynotes. You're going to be able to uh, have side conversations and chats with folks. You're going to be able to understand what uh, industry is presenting and you'll be able to understand what uh, Special Operations Command is looking for and, and the gaps and challenges they have in the in the supporting the war fighters. And so I, I really believe that the way we um, put this together will be something that'll be valuable. Again, we'll learn a lot in this one and, and as we move forward, we'll, you know, I, I think we all know that this is going to change uh, the future of the world to some degree uh, and how we move forward. So we're going to learn a lot from this and we're going to take our lessons observed and turn them into lessons learned and make it better as we go forward. But I think um, this uh, virtual uh, event will be one that will really set a standard and a pace um, for certainly in the near term, how we do things and it'll influence how we uh, construct things in the future. So we're really Really looking forward to it, looking forward to learning a lot, looking forward to um, continuing to support our special operations brethren, uh, men and women out there doing the job, and industry is all in to try to do everything they can to help. And and talk to us about how does this work, right? Folks register for it. 
uh, you are going to be live casting uh, or, or Zoom casting, if you will, events so that folks can participate in a distributed fashion. But how are you going to do some of the other elements that go with the trade show? I know that you guys have a couple of thousand, uh, I think it's more than 2,000 uh, attendees that have registered. You've got 50 companies that are participating. Obviously, you have the full uh, backing of the command uh, as well as the component commands uh, as well. Talk to us about how you're going to try to create that both the organization and the spontaneity that makes these shows so attractive for everybody because you go and you do run into Hawk Carlisle's that you haven't seen uh, in a long time or Eva Marie's or other folks. Uh, and then you actually end up having spur of the moment conversations that are both business changing and, and very, very productive. Well, that's a great question. And, and we're working hard on getting that right. So we're going to obviously have the, the basic construct. There'll be keynotes from folks like uh, Rich Clark and, and other folks, there'll be panels uh, that you'll be able to attend and be part of, um, which is kind of going with the normal uh, agenda as you work through these things. But the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have industry showcases where different industries can come on and, and showcase what they're talking about, almost like if you're walking through an exhibit hall. Uh, and we're also gonna be able to have side conversations. So, you know, you can, if you see something or you have a question on a keynote or you see an industry form or an industry showcase and you want to uh, ask a question or, or either from the SOCOM perspective or from industry perspective or any attendee, you can make a request and send it in and the other person that you want to talk to about it will accept that and you'll be able to go into a separate conversation and have that. So it's it's clearly not going to be the same. You're not going to be walking through the halls, which, uh, you know, I think is incredibly important, but we'll get close, I think, with uh, ability to uh, request those conversations, to see those showcases, to listen to the keynotes, to listen to the panels, uh, and continue to interact. It's just, uh, you know, you're going to be doing it from the comfort of your own home or your own office in front of your computer uh, instead of walking the halls of uh, the convention center in Tampa. So we're working hard to make sure that we allow that amount of communication and interaction that we've had in the past. Let me take you to the question of trade shows. This is the worst economic crisis we've had in many generations. It's likely going to get worse before it gets better. And there is going to be an impact at some point on defense spending. I want to get to that in a minute. But in a more immediate sense, the, the message that folks are saying is, hey, too many people have been traveling too much and there are too many trade shows and this is going to be a great experience to winnow those down. The trouble is that great organizations like yours survive not just on individual and corporate dues, but also sponsoring events that are professional development events, but also generate revenue for you to do good works for your membership. Um, and, and you guys do everything from helping people be more productive on trade, how to run small businesses, and, and that's thanks to chapters you guys have around, dedicated chapters you guys have around the world. Any sense at this point, Hawk, on how this is going to affect a, a critically important business for everybody in the ecosystem, whether you're an exhibitor, an attendee, or even a news company that you know, survives on sponsorships to cover the events? Yeah, so I think that's a great question. So we do know that it is going to affect it. And certainly in the near term to midterm, it'll have an effect. But I, I would tell you, I would caution to jump to too early of a conclusion uh, that it's going to, that trade shows are going to cease to exist. I don't think that extreme is going to happen. And the other extreme is we're going to go to back to exactly what it was like last year before all this, uh, this crisis uh, occurred. So I don't think it's going to be either extreme. I think it's going to be somewhere in between. And I, I, I would caution us to jump to too early conclusions. So we're learning from this. I, I do believe that maybe there, there were too many uh, travel, uh, airline flights, travel, uh, hotel reservations, uh, and per diem for a one-day event um, didn't make sense maybe. Uh, so I think we'll learn a lot from this and it will change as we come out the other side. I, you know, I mean, if you say, if you remember 9-11, people said nobody's ever going to fly again. Well, they do, but we just changed the environment. You know, it's just, we fly differently than we did in the past. And I think the same thing will happen. But I, I do believe also that um, personal interaction, face-to-face, -face, um, you know, one of the one of the comments that some people used to make is virtual presence is actual absence, which is not entirely true, but there's a 
a, a kernel of truth in there. So I, I do believe right. that um, there will be uh, there will be trade shows in the future. I do believe there will be fewer. I do believe that it will be um, probably a hybrid or an, an, a something different than we've done in the past. What we're looking at at NDIA is uh, maybe uh, shorter ones being all virtual, uh, longer one or virtual and in person. If you happen to be in the location, you can go in person. Mm -hmm. A hybrid where you do a good portion of it uh, virtually. You have a lot of you offer a lot of people the ability to attend virtually, but you also have uh, decision makers and key players in actual attendance. So they're smaller, but they're uh, just as impactful and you end up having j even more people because you can bring more people in virtually. So I do think that it will affect how we go forward. I think uh, we at NDIA are working hard to learn and, and observe and, and push the envelope and try things, VSOFIC being one of them. And I think we'll, uh, we'll come out of this on the other side and we'll adapt, evolve, and NDIA will continue to be the leading Defense Industrial Association in the world, and we'll figure uh, we'll figure out how to do this best to meet our members' needs as well as industry needs, and as well ultimately, which our goal is, and that is to make sure that those young men and women do the mission of our nation, have the equipment, the training, and the capability to do the mission we ask them to do. So, it's going to change things, but we'll learn from it, and we'll adapt and evolve, and we'll be even stronger on the other side. Um, I, I have to say, I, I love these events. It's a great opportunity to connect with people. And I am under no circumstance trying to make an argument um, against those, uh, you know, the, the live event and, and the travel and the benefits that, uh, that everybody uh, get from it. But it, it, it is just a question that's come up in virtually uh, every interview uh, we've done. Let me ask you, uh, we've got about 30 seconds left. Let me ask you, uh, about what the defense spending outlook looks like from where you guys are sitting. I know that this has, uh, this emergency has sort of hit the nation quickly. It's hit the nation and the world hard. Um, there are nations now that are struggling with stimulus. We're one of the nations that has directed trillions of dollars to that, including trillions of dollars in lost uh, anticipated tax revenue. Any sense at this point about how the defense budget is going to be impacted? Because we do see impacts in other countries and for many, it's only a matter of time before it materializes here as well. Yeah, I, it is going to impact our defense budget. I, I think a couple of things we thought prior to this occurring that the, the prediction was defense budgets would be flat in the United States. Uh, I think that is hopeful now. It's probably a little bit um, harder to predict, um, but our adversaries are still out there. And we still have a great power competition with the pacing threat of China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. So the, the threat did not go away with this uh, crisis and this pandemic. Um, but, you know, the other half of the discussion is our economy, the United States economy, is an element of national power. And we have got to understand how to deal with and, and uh, reduce the deficit that our country has. So... Spending is going to be a factor, um, uh, and so we're going to have to be smart about it, and we're going to have to figure out exactly, as a nation, uh, what those critical threats are and how we're going to oppose them. Uh, but I think, you know, the national security of this nation is, you know, as they say, the only thing that's more expensive than national security is not doing national security. So I think uh, uh, bottom line is I think budget's flat uh, in the defense realm. Uh, more smarter use of our dollars, how we do them, is uh, the way that I hope it goes. There's a potential that it could actually have slight decline. But again, I think it's too early to make those calls. Hawk, thanks so much again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Best of luck to you, your team, uh, as you guys uh, try to blaze a, a new trail. And we're uh, looking forward to being part of this uh, great new endeavor. So thanks for joining us. Hope you, uh, yours and your team stay well. Thanks, Vago. As always, it's great talking to you, and please take care of yourself. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Please follow our daily interviews with top government, military, industry, and thought leaders at Defense and Aerospace Report, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Follow us on Twitter at Defero Report. That's at D-E-F-A-E-R-O Report. Like us on Facebook at Defense and Aerospace Report, and check us out on LinkedIn. Check out our weekly cyber report sponsored by Northrop Grumman and our broader Navy coverage that's sponsored by Fincantieri Marinette Marine.
Thanks again to Bell for their generous sponsorship, and we'll see you again tomorrow.